Now, I want to take a little while to demystify the fully functioning person. I, don't, I won't say a lot about it right now, but I want you to know how it fits and why it's in the same book as psychotherapy. And this is the way it, what happened. By 1949, I had gotten to the University of Chicago Counseling Center in 1947 and was, uh, then I was the uh, research person. I was the coordinator of the research. And all of us, uh, the whole staff, began to realize that one thing we had not done, that we were studying very closely the, uh, the inside of psychotherapy, word for word and so on, but we never studied outcomes. In other words, so what? What happens after therapy ends? We got so, uh, I mean, a tape recorder wouldn't tell us that uh, so easily. So we got fascinated by the record. It wasn't tape, by the way. It was a old fit, a 75 RPM iron discs that he, he used. And about 10 inches, the old 78 revolutions per minute, the old ones. Anyhow, and that wasn't going to help much in outcomes we had to, but we started studying seriously some ideas about what would we imagine, what hypotheses could we put forth for uh, the outcomes for what happened afterwards. And uh, we began to, and I, because I, I was coordinator of the research, I felt a special responsibility to write up a paper. And by the way, it's in this book. Uh, let, let me say, while I'm holding the book, some of you may get interested in, in the book. It has a chapter on play therapy, a chapter on brief therapy, uh, a, a chapter on a single uh, interview and how it sometimes works and lots of other things. And then another thing that uh, when we went for the idea of studying outcomes of therapy, in my paper I wrote a uh, sentence that was destined to be very important to me. I wrote that the client uh, would uh, become, uh, would return to, and I used two words, would, be re would return to organic order. Now, I wrote this in 1949 before we worried about organic tomatoes or <laughs> organic corn. The word organic had a little different meaning to me than that. And here's what I was saying. In a sentence, I was proposing that therapy would lead the client to a return to organic order. And what I meant, the reason I chose those two words was that I wanted to say the whole person. That's what organic stood for. You wouldn't exactly know it. But when I said organic order, I meant the whole organism would have a more defined structure, a more competent structure. Uh, that, that was a guess, uh, that, that I was postulating it. Once I did that, I was kind of stuck. Like, hey, here I've got words that sound good, 
But who in the world would know what they really mean, including me? So I realized I'd better study in greater de detail what this organic order, this effective functioning might look. How might it look in a real person after therapy? Or putting it another way, if I could find people highly effective, what would their characteristics, how could I define them? Who would they be? Uh, how could I really describe them? And so I realized, if I wanted to be honest about it, uh, uh, I'd better start studying a little bit greater detail. You can't just study a whole person all at once. You have to study them in greater detail. And so I began, and I changed the words from organic order to organismic integration. That sounded a little better. Organismic was better, because organic could mean almost anything. Organismic integration, a together person. And I figured I needed to know, if we were going to study outcomes of therapy, uh, we better know something about the, the effective person. And I figured, well, maybe it'll take me a year to find this out. I so I better devote some time to it. And 30 years later, I almost got the answer. <laughs> it actually, it turned out, <laughs> turned out, first of all, it was such an interesting question that I liked studying it. Uh, and secondly, it was much more complicated than I could ever imagine. What I did was to take us as a human system interrelated in all kinds of way, ways. And then I studied uh, what I call subsystem, like the cognitive sus subsystem, the interpersonal subsystem. I got it all in the book here. In fact, I have a uh, chapter on uh, uh, human system model of the person where all the subsystems are listed, including the emotional subsystem, the biological, and so on. And we, we made empirical studies of each subsystem so we could say, this is the way an effective person functions.